All right, it's that time. My favorite segment is here. I'm putting Sam on the hot seat, covering all the latest hot topics in Minnesota sports called What Does It Mean? Sam, you ready to roll? Let's do it. I love this. Well, you don't know what the questions are yet, Sam. Just take it easy. Okay, (laughs) here we go. What does it mean with Sam? Twins win their 10th game in 11 outings and currently own the MLB's number one ERA ranking through the first four weeks. What does it mean when it comes to the more shocking stat, the Twins' early overall success and win streak or their dominant pitching staff? Yeah, it's easily the pitching that shocks me. This was supposed to be a weakness, and they've gotten unbelievable production out of you know, some arms that they certainly didn't expect, whether it's Bundy or Paddock or on Sunday, Josh Winder showing up kind of out of the woodwork and just dealing a gem on the road at Tampa for that win on Sunday, 9-3. to three. Um, Here's my concern is that remember how a couple weeks ago we said this Twins offense won't hit right now but Mm -hmm. they probably will get around to it because they're just really talented I feel like the pitching staff is due to regress at some point Um, maybe they get more into the summer months when you know it warms up the bats are going a little more for all these teams and uh, and you know they start getting knocked around a little bit I fear that that could happen so it's all the more important for the offense to stay strong for the twins because the pitching just cannot keep this up over a 162 game season. They don't have enough high end talent. They've got a lot of number three and number four arms in this rotation. And right now it's working. I mean, knock on wood, it's really going well for them. And uh, they might have something in this Joe Ryan. He might be an ace in the making, but I still am waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, The hope is that the twins can take advantage of a soft schedule for the next four weeks or so get 10, 12 games above 500, and then they've got a nice cushion if things get tougher. Five weeks ago, you tell any fan, "Ah, the Twins are going to go on, you know, a seven, eight game winning streak. You go, oh, wow, okay, pretty impressive. Didn't expect that. But you tell them that they have the number one ERA, this pitching staff dominating like the way they are right now. No way. No way anybody believes you at all. All right, next one. The Vikings declined center Garrett Bradbury's fifth-year option and will now become a free agent after the 2022 season. What does it mean for the long-term plans for the center at the position as we sit here today? And how many games does Bradbury actually start in 2022? Yeah, this is a head-scratcher that Ron and I were talking about on our show as well. Mm -hmm. I, I... I don't really get the mixed message here because I, I fully expected them to decline the option. I think right. that, that the writing was on the wall there, but whether it was free agency or the draft, they did not address the center spot, whether yeah. it was a, a, a competition for Bradbury or just a, a backup. Uh, they've got plenty of guards that they brought in who maybe can, can shift over, but not a lot of center experience other than uh, an undrafted free agent who plays center who, you know, I, I don't know what, what, his expectation can realistically be. So what does it mean for Bradbury long-term? I mean, I think that declining the option means that he needs to have like a pro bowl caliber season to save his career. Um, And even if he does, you know, that, that could mean that he signs elsewhere after the season and, and maybe he has success later in his career with another team. Um, But how many games will he start for the Vikings this year? I think the over under has got to be like 14 and a half. I mean, Mm -hmm. he's the guy as of now, there's no one else I would trust to play that role, even though Bradbury's had his struggles. He still does have sort of the IQ, I think, to to be an effective guy pre-snap to help Kirk out, still good in the run game. Um, It's just we're constantly asking him to be better in pass protection, and it's just not happening. He's not big enough. He can't hold up. But He's the only guy right now. So, I mean, I'll give him a couple of games for injury or what have you, but I think 14 and a half is my number. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I mean, you got both sides of the coin. Yeah, long-term future not looking great, but he's going to have every opportunity, I think, this year, at least starting out those first eight, 10 games for sure uh, to, to you know, maybe prove them wrong and say, hey, maybe I am worth another one or two-year extension after this season. Okay, last one. What does it mean with Sam? Check this one out. Adrian Peterson is back in the news, Sam, 
has agreed yeah. to domestic violence and alcohol counseling after his arrest on suspicion of domestic violence six months ago. Peterson, who is now 36, said he plans on playing again next year after stints with the Titans and Seahawks to end 2021. What does it mean for Peterson's actual chances of signing with the team and playing in what would be his 17th career in the league? I don't know. I don't know how much you know, meat there, there is left on that bone. We, um, we've said that for 10 years though, right? That's the problem, right? I mean, we've said that there's no way. Right. And then it just keeps coming back. This guy's just the ultimate warrior. All right. We're going to do a little on-air research. So let's look at his yards per carry in recent years. So 2018, 4.2 with mm -hmm. Washington, 4.3 the next year with uh, Washington again, then with Detroit, 3.9. Last year with two teams, 2.6. Not bad. Sensing a, Not sensing bad. a downward trend. <laughs> hey, you need a yard. He'll get you 2.6. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a Adrian just doesn't really know how to how to quit football. I mean, this is not – if you talk about going out on top, this is not, this is not what that is. This is this him trying – he is trying to get – every yard he can i think he cares about his legacy he cares about where he finishes in the all-time yards mark i think it's a pipe dream to think that he's going to pass you know emmett at this point but i believe he's in the top five i think yep, um and he I ranks think fifth right now with yeah. uh what fourteen thousand nine hundred and eighteen career rushing yards and again said he plans on continuing playing next season we'll see about that yeah yeah, I, I don't know who's gonna gonna make that signing. There are just so many other younger backs that are probably better at catching the ball and pass protection. I'm surprised he got a sniff last year, also. Mm -hmm. um, but I've said that every year since about 2015. So, uh, hey, Adrian is ageless. I hope he gets his you know his family situation figured out first and foremost. Of course, yep. But that but that is that that is one more element too. That if teams are needing a running back. That's one more kind of knock against Adrian to say, all right, he's been struggling lately and he's got this legal thing and he's 36, 36 37 years old. Um, so I think the ship has sailed. I don't think he's playing again.